general and his men had been marching. Now they were at the town and ready for war. The general called his gunner. Is the gun in place? Oh, yes, sir, the gunner replied. Is it aimed at the town? It is, sir, said the gunner. Good, said the general. Load it. When I give the order, fire. Understood, sir. And the gunner went away. Moments later, the gunner came back. Sir, we can't fire the gun. Why not? snapped the general. Because we can't load it, sir. The general grew red in the face. Why can't you load it? Please, sir, said the gunner. There's a duck in the gun. A duck? cried the general. You mean a... Yes, sir. Yes, it goes quack, quack. And, sir, it is made a nest in the gun. <gasps> the cheek of it, shouted the general. Get rid of it at once. Mm, I tried, said the gunner, but it won't come out. I think it's sitting on some eggs. Oh, I'll soon fix that, said the general, and he picked up his sword. A duck can't stop an army. The general and the gunner went out to where the gun had been set, aimed at the town. The general looked down the gun and saw two small eyes looking back at him. Here, dilly, 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 he called. Nice dilly. <laughs> the duck quacked, but didn't move. The general became angry. Come out, blast you, he bellowed, banging on the gun with his sword. There was another quack, but the duck did not stir from her nest. The general paced up and down. <sighs> Ugh, I can't have a duck upsetting my plans. There is something you could do, sir, said one of the men. You could fire the gun with the duck inside. No, 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 said the general. We'll think of something else. Ah, I know. We'll borrow a gun. The general put on all his medals, polished his boots and with a white flag in his hand, went to the town. Take me to your prime minister, he said to the town guards. The guards led him through the streets to the prime minister's house. When the general knocked, the door was opened by the prime minister's daughter. Oh, good afternoon, said the general. Do you know who I am? Oh, yes, said the young woman. I've seen your picture in the paper. Won't you come in? She turned and called. Father, here is the general to see you. The Prime Minister appeared. How do you do, General? Oh, not very well, he sighed. Then he told the Prime Minister about the duck in the gun. What are you going to do about it? asked the Prime Minister. The general coughed and looked at the floor. Hmm, that's why I came to see you. I was wondering if you could lend us a gun. It's not a very fair war if you have guns and we haven't. I agree, said the Prime Minister. But you see, we have only one gun. Couldn't we share it? asked the general. You could fire a shot at us and then we could take the gun and fire a shot at you. The Prime Minister laughed. <laughs> Goodness, no, that would never do. Besides, our gun is far too heavy to move. The General's moustache drooped. The answer's clear, said the Prime Minister. You'll have to put the war off for three weeks. By that time, the duck will have hatched her eggs and you will have your gun back. The two men shook hands. Fair enough said the general. We'll forget about the war for three weeks. When the soldiers heard the news, they were very pleased. Three weeks holiday. They were so delighted, they put food down the gun when the general wasn't looking. But after one week, the general had another problem. 
he put on his medals, picked up the white flag and once more went to see the Prime Minister. How are you? asked the Prime Minister. Not good at all, said the General. The truth is, I'm running out of money. For a whole week, my men have done nothing and they expect to be paid for it. That is a problem, said the Prime Minister. I don't suppose you could lend me some money, said the General. No, said the Prime Minister. Men should not get money for doing nothing. However, I can pay your soldiers if they will work for me. You see our town? It needs painting. The houses are shabby and the shops look a mess. In two weeks, your men could paint the whole town. <gasps> what a great idea, said the General. Thanks very much. I'll tell my men at once. This time, the men were not so pleased. But when the General said he could no longer pay them, they agreed to work in the town. Early next morning, they put on old clothes and left the camp. The General went out to look at the gun. The duck was still there, sitting on her nest and quacking to herself. The General looked over his shoulder to make sure he was alone. He took some cake from his pocket and he quickly put it down the gun. And then he spent the rest of the morning sitting in the sun reading. Every day the men went to work in the town. The camp was very quiet. Sometimes the general would look at the town through his spyglass and watch it change colour. Sometimes he visited the Prime Minister and his daughter and drank tea in their garden. Sometimes he just walked as far as the gun with a pocket full of bread or biscuits. Near the end of the third week, the eggs hatched. The general walked past the gun. He heard not only quack, 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 but also a tiny beep, 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 beep. He rang the alarm bell as loudly as he could. At once, the men put down their paint and brushes and ran back to camp. Attention, called the general. The duck's eggs have hatched. He looked inside the gun. Here, dilly, dilly, dilly. Out popped a little head. It was the first duckling. Very carefully, the general lifted it to the ground. Then another duckling came out, and another until there were eight baby ducks waddling around the general's feet. Last out was the mother duck. She looked at all the men and quacked loudly. Then she flew down to her ducklings and marched them across the grass. Three cheers for the duck, shouted the men, throwing their hats in the air. Hooray! 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 Now we can use our gun again, said the general. Now we can have a war. The soldiers stopped cheering. They became very quiet. They stood with their hats in their hands and looked at the ground. Please, sir, said the gunner, we can't shoot at that town. We would spoil the new paint. Yeah, said one of the men. We work for weeks on those houses. The general nodded. It did seem silly to blow up freshly painted houses. Besides, he'd become rather fond of the Prime Minister's daughter. Hmm, what will we do, he said. Mm, you couldn't put the war off for good, could you, sir, said the gunner. After we've finished painting the town, we can all go home. The general thought for a long time. All right, he said. I'll go and tell the Prime Minister. So, that was the end of the war. The men finished their painting and the General married the Prime Minister's daughter. It was a big wedding with flowers and a cake 
that had a white sugar gun on top. Of course, the duck came. She and her eight ducklings were there to march behind the army band. <laughs> 